Yo, what is good, y'all? It's your boy Top back here with another video. Yes, we are going to be doing another IRL type of video today, in which me and my brother Nate are going to go through each and every NBA team and tell you guys which you know who is my most underrated player on each team and who Nate thinks the most underrated player is for that specific team. Now, you know our opinions are our own, so know that going into the video. And if you guys differ with opinions, that is fine. Uh, but please, you know, just understand that these are our own opinions. You know, if everybody shared the same opinion, what would be the point of having that opinion? But before we get any further, if you are new to the channel and have not yet, please smash that subscribe button as we're on the road to 35,000 subscribers. And let's hop right into the video. One thing to note is that this video was super, super long. So we're going to split it into two different parts. Part one is going to be this video. Part two, the link to that when it is published will be down in the description. So just one extra thing to note. The first team we're going to talk about today is a team that was an absolute mess come playoff time in the Philadelphia 76ers. And when it came down to the playoffs, you know, they didn't have Ben Simmons and they got they got swept. They literally got swept in four games with arguably a lot of people think he's the best center in the NBA and he got swept in the first round. Anyways, um, Nate, kind of what are your thoughts on the 76ers and, and kind of a player that, that, you know, go over the rosters, uh, go over their roster and tell me kind of what you're thinking behind the Philadelphia 76ers. Oh, my guy is Shake Milton. And the reason I pick Shake Milton because of this reason, to have a guy who's a combo guard in this rare so, like he's he's a scorer at heart, but he's in a he's been an efficient scorer throughout his career, which is you know lots of times those guys who come on late in their career that are scorers they're they're lots of times inefficient. But Shake Milton's been efficient. He's a good three point shooter. He's a decent playmaker. He's a you no, know, he's defending. He's got got a ways to go, but offensively he's a very very gifted player. You know, and I I don't disagree with Shake Milton. And, and you know, when I looked up and down the 76ers roster, it was tough for me to come up with that one guy. You know, Shake Milton probably uh, he's definitely a, a very very good option. But for me, one of the lone stars that I'm going to talk about today as the most underrated is Ben Simmons. You know, and I get he's a star in the league, but just because you're a star doesn't mean you can't be underrated. Ben Simmons got a lot of hate, a lot of slander. Uh, for the last couple of seasons just because of his inability to shoot but I think we saw in this year's playoff how playoffs how big of an impact Ben Simmons truly makes on the basketball court just his versatility on both the offensive and defensive end you know almost averages a near triple double uh, and just him like the 76ers lack of having him just made their whole team kind of fall apart in a sense and you got to realize they still haven't beat they still got Toby Harris Al Horford's not been great this season but he's on a max type of deal uh, I mean it, it's not a bad 76ers rosters but they got swept, you know, and, and I think that showed how not only good Ben Simmons is, but valuable Ben Simmons is for the 76ers. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Simmons is underrated. Uh, I think part of it is just he doesn't fit well. So I think him on a different team, he might he might blossom a little bit as well. But his defense is so, so elite, and it's one of the most overlooked aspect, aspects of his whole game. Absolutely. So Ben Simmons, Shake Milton, obviously, in my opinion, are very, two very, very good options for the Philadelphia 76ers. The next team here is the Milwaukee Bucks. They're already down 1-0 to the Miami Heat. Now, I would say the Milwaukee Bucks, looking at their roster as a whole, there's a few guys that I think are underrated on their team. It's just which guy do I think deserves the tag as the most underrated? Like, when I look up and down this roster, I see three or four or five guys that could get the most underrated tag. For me, one of the guys that I'm higher on than most people is Chris Middleton. Now, when you look at Chris Middleton, I think he is a very, very, very good player. Average 21 points. Uh, I think it was like seven rebounds uh, this season. Very, very good shooting. I think he shot over 40% from three. At only play, he played less than 30 minutes a game, averaged 21 points with Giannis. You guys got to realize Giannis is, is a pretty ball dominant player too. So I think Chris Middleton takes the backseat a lot. When Giannis was hurt this season, just look up Chris Middleton's stats, stats without Giannis. You will be truly amazed. So for me, I think I have to go with Chris Middleton as being the most underrated for me for the Milwaukee Bucks, just because I think he's a top 15 player in the league and most people would not even put him in their top 20. I think Chris Middleton is one of the, one of the, if not the most overlooked player in the entire league. That is why for me, he is the most underrated player for the Milwaukee Bucks. Nate, go ahead, take me through your mindset looking at the Bucks team. 
No, so I agree 100%. Because I have, I have Middleton as mine, too. I mean, there is a couple guys in the Bucks. Brooke Lopez is one of them that comes to mind to me, especially this year. He's kind of had a down year, but he's still very, very good in his defending trade. But, no, I say Middleton. And here's, here's my whole th- take about Chris Middleton. I think it's very, very hard in this league to, when at the start of your career, just be a role player, you know, for the most of your career. And then when you get into the 27, 28, 26 range, that's when you finally break out. And he wasn't a super high draft pick. He wasn't a highly touted prospect coming into the NBA. And that really hurts in terms of when people talk about you as a star or a superstar because with Chris Middleton, it's just been the last couple seasons he's really emerging. So it's still, I feel like no one really wants to believe in the guy. But And they just say, and they just say he's a shooter, but he's way more than that. He, plays, he brings up the ball half the time. And, and that's that's one thing that just disturbs me a lot. A lot of people are like Chris Middleton is just a sharpshooter. All right, so you're telling me a sharpshooter is averaging 21 points in 29 minutes per game, and he's just a sharpshooter. All he can do is shoot. You're wrong. Chris Middleton but has it, a handle to him. Uh, it, listen, he passes the ball better than a lot of just pure scores in the game. I I don't know. I I like Chris Middleton a lot. And that's the thing. I feel like everyone just wants to follow the national narrative. But if you actually watch the Bucks play, if you watch the Bucks play one game, the, the within a quarter, you'll realize Chris Middleton's more than a shooter. So I don't know where this narrative comes from if people just don't watch the Bucks or what. And and I get he struggled in the playoffs quite a bit. Uh, but that the playoffs don't tell the whole story. You know, you can say he struggled first in the playoffs. And then in the biggest game, he's probably, you know, one of the biggest games he's ever played in. Game one against the Heat. He has 23 first half points uh, and really kept the Bucks in it. So you can say whatever you want about the playoffs, but it's pretty hit or miss. In my opinion, Chris Middleton is the most over is the most underrated player on the Milwaukee Bucks. Hopping in to the next team here. Ooh, I don't even know, man. The Chicago Bulls are just an absolute mess up and down this roster. I looked three or four times to try to find a underrated player on this roster because it was tough for me to truly find. So I'm going to let you lead this one, Nate. I have one in mind, but I want to hear where you're coming from first. I'm going to be kind of interested to hear what you say because it's kind of like you said, it's kind of hard to pick a player on the Bulls. They just got a lot of guys, and I guess you got to you got to try to – I mean, they got Levine as well, so I guess if you think he's underrated. But for me, I look at a guy in Thomas Sadoransky. Yes, he's had a down year shooting-wise, but he, in my opinion – a guy who can really do it all on the basketball court, you know, he's he can pass, he can score. I think he's I think he had a down season in because he when he was in Washington, he would play really really good some games. I mean, there were games where he'd play where he would play 35 minutes and get you 20 and he'd almost get you a triple double some games. Mm-hmm. And so for that reason, I don't know what it was in Chicago this year, but he really just didn't emerge like I thought he would. But I still think he has a lot of game in him. A guy who can shoot, he can drive, he can pass, he can rebound. He's got good positional size. I think he can become a better defender. He already, I mean, he's he's decent at, at, at getting in the passing lanes at times, but I, I've always liked Thomas Sadoransky. You know, Sadoransky, I, 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 I just, I'm not going to say he's not uh, underrated. I just, just when I watch him, he's just there kind of. Uh, but the guy I'm going to, you know, go with is, is a guy that not a lot of people would think of with the Chicago Bulls, and that's Shaquille Harris. If you look up and down the Chicago Bulls this season, minute by minute, Shaq Harrison has been arguably their best player. I'll take you through it. In his 43 games, he's averaging 11 minutes a game. In those 11 minutes, he's averaging five points, two rebounds, and one assist, shooting 38% from three. Now, like I said, it's very limited sample size. If you take those 40 minutes, he's played 400 minutes this season. That's not a lot of minutes, but he has been very, very productive. Now, I'm not, I don't know why he's not playing more minutes. Don't ask me why. Uh, because in my opinion, he's been one of the best players for the Bulls when he's got when he's got extended run. I, I like Shaq Harrison, and when he's seen, you know, 20 minutes, he's played very, very well. Yeah, no, Shaq Harrison, I mean, for me, it's just like, I don't really watch the Bulls, so... I don't really know much about him, but he's he's definitely a guy who who could potentially emerge. I think I don't know how good he could be. I think he may he's probably just a role player at best, but definitely not a bad pick. Moving on to the next team here, another interesting team, uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers. Now, I I'm not gonna lie to you, they got a, you know like 
like uh, some other teams, they got a lot of different guys uh, that I think you could go with. Um, but for me, when I looked, listen, I wasn't high on Colin Sexton. And then I got into looking at how good and efficient he was this season. And Colin Sexton balled out. Like, he's not the pre- he's not the reason the Cavs aren't, in, aren't good. You know, Colin Sexton's a very good player, uh, putting up some very good numbers on pretty efficient shooting. Now, obviously, that's only one side of the ball, but he's been efficient, you know, throughout his career, a very, very good shooter uh, and everything like that. He's a very, very good scorer. I think even in, even for me, I overlooked him earlier this year, um, you know, especially even when we made those tier lists, I overlooked him and then I got into the stats and, and analytics and I said, man, Colin Sexton's been doing his thing. So Colin Sexton, for me, is the most underrated player for the Cleveland Cavaliers. What are you thinking on the Cavs side, Nate? Sexton's not a bad pick. Definitely had a, had a very good sophomore season. He had a, he had a good freshman season as well. But you, you could definitely see him improve, become more efficient, become a little more slowed down as well. But for me... Uh, it, it wasn't. It, it wasn't. It wasn't even a competition, honestly. Kevin Love for me is the guy because when you think of the Cavs, people even forget about mentioning Kevin Love because he's been so relevant. I guess you could say these past couple of years. But this guy was the third best player on on two champ or on a championship team. He's been super super efficient throughout his career. He's a great stretch big. He can rebound. He's not a bad defender either. People want to hate on Kevin Love not knock his defense. He's not terrible on the defensive end. So for me, it was it's it was Kevin Love, and I think I think if when he gets moved, because there's no way he's staying in Cleveland long term. When he gets moved for whatever it is to a contender or whatever, I think people are going to start talking about him more again. You know, I don't disagree with that. The one thing that worries me uh, with Kevin Love is, is he going to be able to stay healthy, especially with him increasing in age? But a healthy Kevin Love, I agree with you wholeheartedly, is a very, very underrated player in this day and age. Hopping into the next team here, the Boston Celtics. And I will be the first to admit it. I do not like most of the top guys for the Boston Celtics. Most of their top guys, I think, are overrated and not underrated. Nate, take me Whoa. through your... Serious? Take me through your mindset with the Boston Celtics. I think the Boston Celtics got a lot of guys who are... I don't know, outside of Tatum. I think Tatum's about... I mean, people are really, really high on Tatum, so I'm, it's no knock on Tatum, but I think Jalen Brown's underrated. I think Kemba Walker still you underrated. Think I think a lot of Boston Brown is underrated. underrated? Yes, it's hard to find. It's hard to find a guy who's soup who's that good defensively who can also be very very productive on the offensive end. I mean, I... and to me, that's that's a premium. He's a guy who doesn't even need the ball in his hands to score. But when you give him the ball in his hands, he's a pretty productive player. The star player, find find a two way star like that is 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 a premium. But for me was it came down i didn't actually choose a star i chose a guy who's not necessarily always in the rotation his minutes are kind of wishy-washy but for me it's still robert williams look i think if robert williams was not on the boston celtics and on a rebuilding team he would be playing 30 to 35 minutes a game and his numbers will back this up and he's gonna give you like three and a half blocks a game double digit rebounds and be an efficient offensive player a guy who can run the floor and for me, you know, I think he went at, I, he's continued to develop in Boston. And I think once he gets that opportunity, whether whether Cantor leaves eventually or Tice, I think he, he could potentially be their starting center for the future. You know, and I don't be a productive one. I don't play. disagree with Robert Williams because when we have seen him play, he's been super, super productive. It's just a limited sample size kind of uh, that's holding me back from him. But like I said, my takeaway from Boston is, you know, they, listen, if they make the NBA Finals, this and that, then okay. I, you know, it, 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 you know, more respect is going to be put on their name. But here's the thing. Jason Tatum, most people think he's a top 20 player in the league. Kemba Walker, most people think he's a top 25 player. Most people think Jalen Brown's at least a top 35 player. So if you have all those guys, and, and if Gordon Hayward is healthy, they have no excuse not to, you know, be that elite. And they've been good this year. I'm not saying that. But we'll see, you know, if, if they can put together, you know, a trip to the NBA Finals, something like that, then maybe. But I just have a hard time seeing all this, you know, so-called talent, this and that, um, and and we'll see if it works out. But for me, 
the guy that's forgotten about so often on this roster is Marcus Smart to me. What Marcus Smart does for you on the defensive end and his ability to knock down threes at a pretty high clip can't be overlooked. Listen, Marcus Smart gives more to the Boston Celtics than a lot of people realize. Now, I'm not going to say he gives you more than obviously the Tatum Walkers and Jalen Brown to the world, but what I'm going to tell you is this. As good as the defenders Marcus Smart is, the mentality that he brings, as well as the leadership all around, I think Marcus Smart is the most underrated player for the Boston Celtics. Moving on from the Celtics, we do have the Los Angeles Clippers. This is kind of for me, it wasn't a tough option. You know, it wasn't. I do think I do think the Clippers have a lot of different guys um, that you can you could obviously make a debate for. Uh, for me, Nate, if you had to guess one player that I think is underrated for the Clippers, who do you think my most underrated player on the Clippers is? I'll be the same one as mine, honestly. Is it Patrick Beverly? Oh no, it's not. So man, I guess I was wrong. All right. Hold up. You go first while I recoup since I, I thought you were going to agree with me, man. Oh, you know I'm not high on Patrick Beverly. I think he's fine, but I don't know why. Why do people people either hate or love Patrick Beverly and there's no in-between for me. It's in-between. Like, he's a great defender. Yeah, he can hit 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 spot up threes, but I don't know why people go crazy over Patrick Beverly. Anyways, my guy is Zubak, and here's why it's Zubak. He is so important to that team. And we've seen in the playoffs, Errol's minutes have been down and Zubox has been up because he's, he's been he's been terrific. He's got great hands. He's got such good hands in the pick and roll and just kind of, you, you know, a little shovel pass under the basket. He, he's, he's super efficient. And he rebounds the ball well. He's a decent rim protector. So I think a guy like him, and we saw, you know, he didn't, he didn't really... He didn't really get a chance in in the, with with the Lakers, and I'm sure the Lakers. I mean, I don't know if they'd love to have him now, but he'd probably be their best center right now. Him or Dwight Howard. He's obviously better than McGee, and I, I just I just love Zubac. He's a good free throw shooter. He he offers you he offers you a whole lot. No, I don't disagree. I think Zubac obviously is underrated. But with that being said, Patrick Beverly, man. Listen, the way he defends, the dog mentality Patrick Beverly has, the energy he brings even when he's not in the game, whether you like it, dislike it, it can't be overlooked or overstated, man. I remember watching, I think it was game, it was game five when the Clippers, I think, blew out the Dallas Mavericks. Patrick Beverly wasn't even playing, but was the most energetic guy on the bench. Not only is he that, he shot 39% from three this year. Yes, 39% from three. Anyways, other than that, so he's a great 3 and D player, brings endless energy. What is there not to like about Patrick Beverly? I would just love to know. What is there not to like? If the Minnesota Timberwolves could get their hands on Patrick Beverly, oh my gosh, my, my heart would be full, man. Give me a Patrick Beverly every single day of the week. I think he is the most underrated player on the Los Angeles Clippers. Hopping right into the next team here, we do have the Memphis Grizzlies. Memphis, they have a lot, a lot, a lot of young guys on the squad. Uh, it's just, I, they're just young. And that, that's the best way to put it. Memphis just has a young core. For me, uh, outside of the young core, obviously, everybody knows how good John ja Morant is. I still think he's pretty, I, I still think he's overrated, underrated. I think John ja Morant's underrated. Val, I think, is underrated as well. Uh, but when it comes down to it, I think the most underrated player on the Memphis Grizzlies is Tyus Jones. And the reason for this is Memphis, you know, kind of, I'm not going to say they, they weren't good in the bubble, but they kind of struggled in the bubble. And I think a big part of that was due to Tyus Jones not being healthy. You know, he wasn't healthy. And obviously, Tyus isn't going to, you know, put up the big numbers as a uh, John Morant is going to. But what Tyus is going to do is he's going to manage the game well, have a great assist to turnover ratio, uh, and just, you know, knock down a uh, jumper. He's not a great three-point shooter, but he's just going to be able to kind of be that great role player, uh, a good f game manager type of player that I think, I, listen, I'm sad that Timberwolves don't have him uh, because I thought even for the Timberwolves, he was the most underrated player on that roster. Nate, who are you thinking for Memphis? I, I love the Tyus Jones pick and you can't, you can't go wrong with him for sure. For me, it's Brandon Clark. And the reason, I've, I've, obviously people are really, really high on Brandon Clark the way it is. But here's why I still think he's underrated. And I think he's the 
fourth or fifth best rookie in this class. I, I have Hero three, and then after that, I'm not sure. But the reason I have Clark, I'm so high on Clark, is because a guy at six eight who can defend five positions and rebound the way he can and and score the way he can from a multitude of levels, and he he doesn't need the ball in his hands at all, and. I mean, think about how many guys in the league we have that can truly defend all all five positions with with great and, and and you can and you can be satisfied with that. I mean, even Robert Covington, he when he gets guard center, sometimes you know he can get bullied down there. We saw Chris Paul last night in in a foot speed race; it's tough for him. But Brandon Clark, I mean, I love the guy so so much. You know, and I I don't I just I, for me I haven't watched the Grizzlies enough. Uh, to really know Brandon Clark that well, I seen I saw what he can do in the playoff type of situation. I will say this: doesn't play a ton of minutes yet uh, in his young career, but uh, I, a lot of that is due because they have a great front court with Val and JJJ, three headed um, monster. So yeah, I, I think it, him and Jaron Jackson in the future is just. I think that's problem. a perfect combination. It's gonna be a big time. I think that's a problem. perfect combination. Memphis is definitely a team to look out for, uh, especially just with their super super young core. Hopping into the next team here. We have the Atlanta Hawks, and if you just look at their play now, Ross, you'd think there'd be a you know playoff team with Trey Young in 90 overall, John Collins in 86, and Clint Capella in 86. But listen, if Clint Capella is in 86 overall. Listen, I'm not going to get too in-depth with 2K's rating. For me, looking up and down the Hawks roster, they're not good at all. They're not good at all. You know, I'm high on Cam Reddish. Uh, I really am, but... You can't really defend how we play this year because he didn't play that well, at least on the offensive end. You know, I was high on, on Scalab this year coming out of college. Um, you know, he hasn't done anything in his young career either. Uh, for me, the most overlooked and underrated player is Kevin Herter. Uh, can be that secondary type ball handler. Can be an upper 30s. Uh, to probably, and I think he has the potential to shoot low 40% uh, percent from three. I think Kevin Herter, his just offensive ability to kind of go along with Trey Young or even give Trey Young uh, a rest. And, and Kevin Herter can take over that prime uh, ball handling type role or the primary ball handling type role. I think it's kind of rare to find a, a guy like Kevin Herter in the league that can kind of play off the ball, have the ball in his hands, run the pick and roll. Uh, he can just do it all. Very versatile at six foot seven. I love Kevin Herter a lot. Nate, what are you thinking with this Hawks roster? be honest i looked i looked at the roster right and i, and I went through every single player and in my opinion it's not to say it's not to knock any of these guys because i don't think any of them are bad but i didn't really see an underrated player so i i guess what i did was i picked the player i liked the most i think i think i really like deandre hunter as a prospect still but i wouldn't say he's underrated so i picked john collins because is a, he's a super efficient big man. He can shoot the three. He can block shots. But and he's not really talked about, you know, as a, as an all star type talent when when he is. But I don't think he's necessarily underrated. And to be honest, I don't like the Clint Capella fit next to him. I think that's going to create a lot of problems for Atlanta defensively. They're already bad defensively. I don't think Capella helps that. I like John Collins at center personally, and you know, I just. I like I like John Collins as a role man a lot, and when when you when you take when you put Capella, in, insert him into the lineup, he's going to be the one setting most of those screens for Trey Young. Not that that's a bad thing either, because Capella is a very good pick and roll player. But I was I I really like Collins in the pick and roll, and, and now that you don't have that, I think he's he might be a little bit more limited. To go along with what Nate said. I think John Collins obviously is a very, very good big in the league and will be for, for years to come. He's only 20, 21 years old. I just don't like the Hawks' entire roster, so I kind of agree with Nate. It was kind of tough to come up with the underrated player. I went with Kevin Herter, but look, I I don't disagree with him saying nobody. So moving on to the Miami Heat. Listen, man, the Heat are contenders. They are definitely contenders, and looking up and down this roster, there are three or four guys that I truly think could be underrated. You know, starting with, you you got a Bam at a Bayou, you got a, a, a Gordon Dragic, um, even Duncan Robinson, Andre Iggy, uh, Tyler Hero, Jay Carter. There's just, 
I, I don't think Iggy's necessarily underrated, but a guy like Hero and Jay Crowder, um, listen, I think you can make a case. For me personally, I think Duncan Robinson is the most underrated player on the Miami Heat, just from the attention standpoint that the defense has to give him. I saw, I think it was Chris Middleton guard Duncan Robinson for the majority of the time Duncan Robinson was in the game, and he just chased him around screen after screen after screen. Made it very, very tough for Duncan Robinson to get any good looks. And just as far as a, a, a standpoint on the defensive end, the attention he requires, I'm not going to compare him to Stephen Curry, but he kind of requires that type of attention. You don't want him to get any good looks because you know it's going to be lights out. So for me, Duncan Robinson is the most underrated player on the Miami Heat. Nate, kind of take me through your mindset on this Heat roster. With Miami, I think basically every player is underrated. Unlike the Hawks roster, I think what you have with Miami, and you saw it yesterday against the Bucks, I think they've got the best chemistry in the entire league in terms of being connected defensively, talking in the defensive end especially, walling up against Giannis. I mean, how many times do you see guys fake, fake, fake pinches and then kind of slow Giannis down? They'd fake pinches, get closed back out into the shooters. It's absolutely incredible to see. But I'm just going to base this. If you look at a guy's entire career, you and you and you and you match it up against someone else's one one guy that I think would shock people is Goran Dragic. This guy never gets talked about, never ever ever gets talked about, and he has been so so good and so so consistent throughout his career. And for some reason, no one no one talks about Goran Dragic as like a top ten point guard, and that's what he's been over the past at least the top half of the league point guard for the, like the last ten seasons. He's always been super super good. He's been fairly efficient. He's been a good shooter. He's been a good decision maker. And he's he's been a very, very good. He's always been very, very good at controlling the pace. You know, and, and I watched Gordon Dragic last night. Uh, it, it, last night when they played the Bucks, And it was just like, wow. You know, like you said, a lot of people don't don't really uh, consider what he can give you. And even he got kind of overshadowed by Kendrick's Nunn's uh, good start to his rookie uh, campaign. But... I think what Gordon Dragic can give you is just an insanely, insanely uh, good point guard. A steady, steady is the best way to describe Gordon Dragic. He is kind of that steady hand. He's averaged, he's had season which he's averaged more than 20, but he's going to go out and give you about 15 a night ball. Just, you know, being a very, very steady player. I absolutely agree with you on Gordon Dragic. Moving on to the Charlotte Hornets. This is another just absolute disaster of a team. I just, I'm going to let you take it. I, I don't, I don't. I have a guy, but I don't know. I don't know what to think about this Hornets roster. Oh, uh, the the rosters and uh, I don't even know what to think about. It's not even like it's not even like the roster's not constructed the right way. It's just their their players just aren't good. Like that's what it comes down. I guess it is a, is kind of a combination that the roster's not constructed the right way because they got a bunch of guys who want to be bucket getters or whatever, and and they're very inefficient bucket getters. But I really, really, really like. As a prospect, PJ Washington, I think he's a little bit underrated. I think his 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 prototype as a player, his ability to stretch the floor, athletic. He can def he can. He's not a bad perimeter defender, and he, he can. He's athletic. He can he can put the ball in the deck a little bit. It's it's obviously an area he can improve at, but I just really really like PJ Washington as a prospect, and I think he's going to be a long term stretch starting stretch for on on a on a on an NBA team. You know, I, I don't know enough, I wouldn't say about PJ. Well, I don't know enough of, uh, of anything about this Hornets roster, but um, I, like I said, I don't know that much about PJ Washington and you know, the Hornets just are a mess all around. One thing I will say is I'm higher on Cody Zeller than most people are. And oh the, no. And the reason for this is because for Holy. Charlotte, he has been the steadiest hand year after year after year and he continues to get better and better and better listen i'm not gonna sit here and say Go cody zeller is that good of a player but he's a consistent player for the charlotte hornets 
that you know you can put up at the center position and you know every single night what you are going to get out of Cody Zeller. I'm not going to say he should be, you know, a top starting center in the league, but you know he's going to be a decent enough big man to battle some of the other bigs in the league and just to beat that inside type of a presence. Now, I'm not going to say he's an incredible rim protector or anything like that because that's not the truth. But on the offensive end, he's going to be decent enough in the pick and roll game, can knock down a mid-range jumper, uh, decent around the rim. I like Cody Zeller a lot. Maybe that's just me because I know Nate doesn't agree with me on this. But I think Cody Zeller. It's is- it's it's just you. It's just you, bro. Who else? Is- Cody Zeller. Look at oh, the horns. Cody Zeller can't Look defend horns, a tree. Man. Look at the horns. I'm sorry. Cody Zeller is going to get fried like a piece of bacon in the pick and Look roll. Donovan him. Mitchell would have had 50, 50 billion points against Listen, him. Listen. Compare him to Bismack Biombo and Willie Hernan Gomez. Like, compare them, please. If they don't have Cody Zeller, they're an absolute disaster at the center position, man. They're already a disaster with Cody him at the Zeller starting is center fine. position. He's a steady hand. Listen. Oh my god. Cody gosh. Zeller is my a most steady underrated, hand. My most underrated player for the Charlotte Hornets. Hopping into what a the trash pick. Hopping into the next team is the Utah Jazz. I like Utah's. Listen, I like watching Utah play, especially they've been incredible these entire playoffs. It's between two guys for me. It's between two guys. I think I know who Nate's going to go with. Uh, but for I guarantee me, you know. For me, it's Royce O'Neal. Here's why. Royce O'Neal is a 3 and D player. That's all you... Listen, Royce O'Neal's stat sheets does not tell the whole story. And I'm high on... I like, stats tell a lot. Um, but when you look at guys like Royce O'Neal, Danny Green, those types of players... Stats don't tell the whole story. What Royce O'Neal is going to give you is an incredible defender that can knock down threes at a high percentage clip. I'm not exactly sure what he has shot uh, this season from three, but I know in, in seasons past, he's been he's been pretty consistent from the three-point line. Not going to say he's going to be a lights-out shooter, but he's going to get it done at a very high level. I am very, very high on Ro- Royce O'Neal compared to most people uh, that I talk to. Nate, what, are you, what is your thought process on this Utah Jazz team? So Royce, I've actually been a little bit disappointed with him in the playoffs. I don't, I don't like. What, no one watches. Let's be honest. If you're an NBA fan and the Utah Jazz are on, you're probably not watching them during the regular season. So I was, I was in this mindset that Royce O'Neal is just going to be this elite defender, and I haven't really seen that in the playoffs. He's a good shooter, and he's a good defender. But I thought he was going to be a better defender than what I've seen so far in the playoffs. And it could just be the series. It could just be me. But for me. Oh, I'm going to say it's Mike Conley. Knew it. This guy, this guy is the definition of a leader on the basketball court. He's a great teammate to have in the locker room, which can't be overlooked. And we've seen, you know, he struggled during the regular season, but we've seen the true Mike Conley start to come out in, in the playoffs for Utah. He's been their second best player, in my opinion, behind Donovan Mitchell. He's been a good knockdown shooter. He's been the secondary ball hunter they've needed when Donovan Mitchell ha- has needed to take take a couple of possessions off or they're trapping Mitchell and then Conley has to make something happen. And he's been super, super good. Doesn't turn the ball over. He's a good defender. What more could you want out of a point guard that just kind of plays their role? You know, I like Mike Conley too, but before the playoffs, listen, man, he was bad this year. This season he was bad, but he's been absolutely balled out in the in the playoffs. And maybe maybe this uh, the, the break that, that the NBA had to take due to the COVID situation was what Mike Conley needed. One other guy I'm going to give a quick shout out to, Jordan Clarkson's been doing his thing, man. Jordan Clarkson is an absolute bucket getter, even without Mike Conley. Helped the Jazz kind of be able to compete in some of those games. Shout out Jordan Clarkson, man. Hopping into the next team is an absolute another disaster of a team, being the Sacramento Kings. I'll let Nate lead this one. What are you thinking as far as the Kings roster? So for me with the Kings... I was looking up and down the roster and I'm like, okay, who's like a player that they have on their team that's like a role player or whatever who's underrated. And I started scrolling up and down and I'm just like, man, this team is really, really, really bad. That's that's the first thing I noticed is I don't understand. The, look at Marvin Bagley. He's been hurt. He's been in and out of the lineup. Hasn't been super good when he's played. In my opinion, a prototypical post player is hard to, to over to say they're underrated. You look at their shooters and Buddy Heal them, Bogdanovich. Eh, I don't really think he's going to And then I look at De'Aaron Fox. Here's a guy who hasn't been super efficient throughout his career necessarily, but he's been the Kings' best player. 
and he's been steadily improving. He's in a situation that he probably doesn't want to be in with a team he doesn't want to fit that doesn't really fit him. And he's still putting up fairly good numbers. And I really, really like De'Aaron Fox's game. Outside of not being a great shooter, he's got everything else. He's a great defender. He's a, he's a pretty good passer. And he's a really, really good scorer. And so for me, I think De'Aaron Fox is underrated because he doesn't get talked about as being a potential all-star point guard. He's one of the better young point guards we have in this league, but he never, ever, ever gets talked about. And I think it's hard if you're a point guard to get necessarily talked about unless you, you know, whether you're averaging, you know, like Trey Young type stats, especially if you're on a bad team. But you're right. I don't think De'Aaron gets talked about enough, but I think the level of respect around De'Aaron Fox is growing and growing. Um, as he just keeps doing it over and over. For me, though, Harrison Barnes, guys, is oh, no. the most underrated player on the Sacramento teams. Nate's saying, oh, no, oh. let me tell you why. This season, this season he's averaging 14 points on 38% three-point shooting with an effective field goal percent of about 53. Then you go and look. What did he do last year? Last year, 16 points, 39.5% from three. This guy is a knockdown elite shooter. He's a decent enough defender. When they, when, when you think about the Sacramento Kings, you never think about Harrison Barnes. But what Harrison Barnes is going to give you is a steady hand. He's done it at the highest levels. If you think about the Golden State Warriors, Harrison Barnes was fine. For them, he wasn't great, but he was fine. A decent defender. Literally sold them. Did they win a championship? Literally sold them. Decent enough defender. Can get it done on the offensive end. Even if you look at what he did for the War Warriors, I'll go back to the Warriors season. Averaged 11 points, or averaged 12 points, 38% shooting from three. What else does Golden State need from him? He's a consistent, let's see what his career. Consistent career, 37% three-point shooter. Averaging 14 points, five rebounds. Guys, he's not going to kill you, but he's not going to, you know, be that standout guy. He's a great Three and kind of D type of role player. Six foot eight. Very, very versatile. Listen, I think Harrison Barnes is very, very good. Do I think, you know, I don't know. When did he get, is he, you know, is, is he, you know, I know when he came out of high school, he was supposed to be the next big thing. Uh, did he live up to that? Probably not. But what Harrison Barnes is, is he's a great role player. For me, on Sacramento Kings, he is the most underrated player. That's what he is, though, is he's a role player, and they gave him a huge contract that now they're not going to be able to move anywhere, and he's going to be stuck there. So hey, I, hey, Nate, you know, who, you know who else got a huge contract that you liked? Mike Conley, 32 mil. Mike Conley deserved it. He deserves 32 mil? He's playing like a $32 million player in the he playoffs. Listen, moving on. The New York Knicks, another absolutely disgusting team. They, when I scroll through it, this might be the most disgusting team to select one player on. And so I'm not going to spend much time on it. Nate, lead the way, man. You're you're you hit it right on the head. I don't I don't really know who's underrated on this team, but I do really like Mitchell Robinson, so I, I just chose him. I think I think maybe I'm not sure because with Mitchell Robinson, I think he could be a very, very big liability in the pick and roll on a on a good team. Kind of like, kind of like Rudy Gobert has been. And that's not to say Rudy Gobert is a bad defender, but when you get Mitchell Robinson on the perimeter, it's it's not good. But he's a very, very good shot blocker, and I think maybe if you get him more on a pace and space team, he might excel a little bit more. Knicks don't really have spacing for him like that, but I think he could be a, a very good pick and roll athletic big who can defend the rim at a, at a, at a fairly high level for for a team like. He could, I think he could fit on a team very well, like the Warriors possibly. But I just I just don't think the situation's right for him. So I, that's kind of why I chose him as my underrated player. I don't really know who I wanted to choose here. What I would say is this. Uh, I think Maurice Harkless has the capability just to be a decent enough role player. I, you know, I say role player a lot, but for the New York Knicks, who else are you going to pick? I'm not that high on Mo Harkless, but listen, who am I supposed to pick? I mean, listen, I... I'm not even comfortable picking anybody for the New York Knicks. So I don't really know. Nate, what do you, do you do? You like Mo Harkless at all, or you know? All I can say is the Blazers were missing Mo Harkless when they had him, right in the in the playoffs. Him and him and him and Al Farouk Amino, they were missing both those guys. Absolutely. So, moving on to a team that I think I think there's a couple of guys that could be uh, have a case for most underrated. But for me, 
the most underrated player is Danny Green. And I know a lot of oh, Lakers no. fans are saying, oh, no. I know a lot of Lakers fans are saying. And I want to say, I'm I wanna, saying, oh, no. I want to hear why you're saying, oh, no, Nate. Tell me why. Because he's supposed to be a 3 and D wing, and all I've really seen is the 3. Where's where's the D Ben Danny Green? That's Listen, all I got to say. Man. Listen, you can say that. You can say that all you want. But you know what? You know what Danny Green's doing? Last year, he hit 46% of his threes. This year, he's hitting 37% of his threes. Last year, me, that's the point. Trust me. 37% is a bad percentage. I forgot. Never. I forgot. 37%, you know, that's a that's a bad percentage. Listen, Danny Green's going to give you a solid, you know, 10 points a game, 8 to 10 points a game. And when you compare him, you know, to the likes of a, a lot of other game, a lot of other guys for this Lakers team, such as the Waiters or J.R. Smith, they can't play those guys over Danny Green because they know Danny Green, first of all, is a winner. Second of all, you can say, obviously, he's not a 3D player. He's 32 years old. He's aging. He's not as, as fast, not as quick as he used to be. He's never been fast. Uh... But he's still going to give you a 3 and D type vibe. And he is, at the end of the day, a winner. Nate, take me through this Lakers roster. Nate, take me through this let Lakers me, roster for you. Let me let, let, let me go back to Danny Green here. And here, here's what I have to say about Danny Green. Every single person, every single season wants to talk about Danny Green, Danny Green. How is this man overrated? All I ever hear about is Danny Green's one of the best 3 and D guys. In the league. Danny Green this, Danny Green that, Danny Green. Oh. Everyone wants to say Danny Green's underrated that it's because he's became overrated, if I'm being honest. So hey, for me, whoa, 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 I'm going gonna... to... Before you go any further, let me ask you this. This playoffs, did people want Danny Green bench? Because yes. I saw a ton of that on Twitter, which is absolutely no, top foolery, man. No, what I'm saying is this, though, Ty. Every single... Am I am I wrong? This uh, this past offseason, everyone said the Lakers need a player like Danny Green. Everyone was like, Lakers need Danny Green. Lakers need Danny Green. Danny Green is good. He's not like this some... I, I think it's because he's won championships. Everyone thinks you need Danny... That Danny Green's this perfect 3 guy because he's won on good championship yes. teams. But he's been on good teams. That's why they won a championship. But, but, you plug but, in but, other 3 and D guys, they can do almost the same thing. But how many 3 and D Obviously guys Danny are Green, there? How many 3 and D guys are there out there, Nate? Not that many. There's truly not that many three and D type players in the league. But listen, like Danny Green. If you were to, if you were to ask someone if they'd rather have Danny Green or Avery Bradley, who would they say? Probably. They Avery. would tell you. They would no. They would say Danny Green. If you would ask the Lakers before the season, you would have Danny Green or Avery before Bradley. Before the Danny season, Green. But yeah. guess what? But guess what? Avery Bradley has now became underrated, and he's not even with the Lakers right now, and the Lakers are missing him greatly. We saw in the first round with Damian Lillard and C.J. McCollum, both went crazy, and Avery Bradley would have been the perfect, perfect guy to lock them down. No, he doesn't get steals. No, he doesn't get blocks. He's not flashy. He does his job. He's got. He's very, very strong. He's very, very quick. He's very, very smart, and he's a good shooter. He can play make a little bit if you need him to. Obviously, the Lakers don't want him to play make. He went Boston with Isaiah Thomas. He was that second. He was kind of their second, their second fiddle on the offensive end at times. And to have a player like him who can guard point guard, that's what they they don't have a guy who can really get low to the ground and guard point guards. They're missing him greatly. That's why I think he's the most underrated player. I don't. I don't disagree with Avery Bradley. I don't. I like Avery Bradley, and that's a that's a very very good pick. But my thoughts behind Danny Green wasn't before the season. My thought is right now, right now at this moment. After the two games, after the three games in which Danny Green went, what, 0 for 9 and Lakers fans were this and that, Danny Green needs to he needs to take a seat, let JR, let, you know, Dion do it. Listen, guys, Danny Green has done it his entire career. He's been the steady hand. He has always been a winner. He's made clutch shots. Listen, what Danny Green's going to give, if the Lakers win the championship, don't be surprised when Danny Green is an instrumental part to that just don't be surprised that's all i'm going to say all right well, that is going to wrap it up for part one of this video make sure to go check out part two that link will be down below in the description so make sure to go check that out as well i hope you guys enjoyed the video drop a like on the video subscribe if you are new and as always man i love y'all and have a blessed day